In this video lesson, we're going to discuss protectionism. Specifically, we're going to talk about the effects of protectionist subsidies on the market for a good that is imported into a country practicing the protectionism. The market we'll look at today comes from an example uh, thought up by a student in one of my IB Year 2 economics classes. Today, we'll be talking about the market for leather in the country of Bangladesh. Bangladesh imports leather, but Bangladesh also produces leather domestically. Why would a country that produces a good domestically prefer to import that good as well? Let's look at our supply and demand diagram to explain. With free trade in the market for leather, we can see that the price that Bangladeshi consumers pay for the product is lower than it would be without free trade. In this diagram, the world price of $5 is determined by the world's supply curve, which is greater than the domestic supply curve due to the fact that other countries have a comparative advantage in leather production. Because of this lower world price, Bangladeshi households and consumers enjoy lower leather prices than they would without free trade. However, the downside of free trade for Bangladesh is that the amount of producer welfare or surplus is less. So in our diagram here, I've outlined the area of consumer surplus or total welfare of Bangladeshi leather consumers in green and the welfare of producers, which we call producer surplus in purple. As you can see, consumers enjoy low prices and a larger quantity of leather than they would without free trade. In this case, the price of $5 allows consumers to consume 32 kilograms, I'm sorry, 30 kilograms of leather, but domestic producers can only produce 10 kilograms of leather. Therefore, at the world price of $5, Bangladesh will import 30 minus 10 million kilograms of leather, so total imports of leather will be 20 million kilograms, as we see here. Under these circumstances, a government may consider imposing protectionism for the leather industry to try to increase the quantity of leather produced by domestic leather producers. In this activity, we're going to show the effects of a protectionist subsidy in the market for leather in Bangladesh and how that affects the market. A subsidy is simply defined as a payment from the government to firms for each unit produced. In this case, we're going to discuss the effects of a $2 per kilogram subsidy from the Bangladeshi government to the producers of leather in Bangladesh. A subsidy is a determinant of supply. So this $2 per kilogram subsidy for Bangladeshi leather producers should increase the domestic supply of leather in Bangladesh, which will be seen as an outward shift of the domestic supply curve in Bangladesh. Let's see the effect that this has on price, on consumers, on domestic producers, on foreign producers, and on total welfare in the market for leather in Bangladesh. Here we see the supply curve of leather produced in Bangladesh with the $2 subsidy. Notice that the supply of leather has shifted outwards or graphically it has shifted downwards by the amount of the subsidy. So now we should see that the vertical distance between the old supply curve and the new supply curve is exactly two dollars. This is because for every kilogram of leather produced by Bangladeshi firms a two dollar subsidy will grant it, in it to the firms in addition to the price that consumers pay. How does this affect domestic quantity supplied? Predictably at a greater supply domestic leather producers will now be willing and able to produce a greater quantity of leather. We can see that in fact the quantity supplied by domestic producers has now increased to 15 whereas previously the domestic quantity supplied was only 10. Now, with greater quantities of leather being produced within Bangladesh, there is less need for imported leather. So the quantity of imports will now be 30 kilograms, 30 million kilograms, minus the 15 kilograms, million kilograms being produced domestically. Imports now equal only 15 million kilograms of leather. Due to the subsidy for B Bangladeshi leather producers, there is a greater domestic quantity supplied. 10 million kilograms was produced before the subsidy, but now because of the subsidy, 20 million kilograms, I'm sorry, 15 million kilograms will be produced domestically, and only 15 million will be imported compared to 20 million before the subsidy. So let's now analyze the effect that this subsidy has on the Bangladeshi market for leather. First, let's see how consumers are affected. If you recall, before the subsidy, consumer surplus was the area of the triangle below the domestic demand curve 
and above the world price. What we notice here is that this subsidy had no effect on the world price of leather. Therefore, consumer surplus remains the green area. Next, let's, let's examine the impact of this subsidy on foreign producers of leather. Before the subsidy, 20 million tons kilo, kilograms of leather were being imported, represented by the distance along the horizontal axis between 10 and 30. After the subsidy, however, only 15 million are being imported, represented by this distance along the horizontal axis. So, one clear loser of the subsidy is foreign producers of leather who now enjoy fewer imports of leather into Bangladesh. Next, let's examine the effect of the subsidy on domestic producers of leather within Bangladesh. To do this, we have to add a couple of more points of information to our graph. We know that a subsidy is a payment from the government to firms per unit produced. Now, at a price of $5, which is the world price of leather, domestic producers will enjoy an additional $2 subsidy from the government on top of that $5. So, in effect, the price that producers in Bangladesh enjoy for their goods is actually $7. So, for every kilogram of leather that producers produce, they will actually receive $7. $5 from the buyer and $2 from the government. So we can see the effect that this has on domestic producer surplus. At a price of $7 per kilogram, domestic producers enjoy a greater level of producer surplus than they did before the subsidy. The yellow triangle now represents domestic producer surplus. Clearly, domestic producers are better off than they were before the subsidy. Before the subsidy, the area of domestic producer surplus was a much smaller triangle on this graph. So, what do we have? So far, we see that domestic consumers are no worse off because of the subsidy because the world price was not affected. Domestic producers are better off because of the subsidy because they get to enjoy an additional $2 on top of the free market price of $5. Foreign producers are worse off but should the Bangladeshi government be concerned that foreign producers are worse off? Probably not. So let's examine the effect on the entire market for leather in Bangladesh. To do this, we need to shade one more area on our graph, and that is the cost of the subsidy to taxpayers. As you know, a subsidy comes from taxpayer money. Therefore, any subsidy for producers has to come out of taxpayers' pockets. On this graph, what I'll do is outline the area of of uh, representing the total cost of the subsidy in blue. As we know, a subsidy is a payment per unit produced. With the subsidy, 15 million kilograms will be produced, and the cost of the subsidy is $2 per kilogram. Therefore, this blue rectangle represents the cost of the subsidy. Now we can conclude that the cost of the subsidy to taxpayers in Bangladesh is actually greater than the increase in domestic producer surplus. Any time that the costs of a particular policy or action outweigh the increase in benefits, we have to say that that policy had a dead weight loss associated with it. The black triangle, which I've shaded here, represents the loss of total welfare, or the dead weight loss of the subsidy for Bangladeshi leather producers paid for by Bangladeshi taxpayers. Clearly, a subsidy such as this meant to protect domestic producers imposes greater costs on society than it does benefits for society. Therefore, this subsidy has to be considered inefficient.